In our last episode, we uncovered the secret experiments of Vault 87 and freed the intelligent supermutant named Fox, though he wants us to call him a metahuman. With his help, we retrieved the Gek. But as we were on our way out, we were incapacitated by some sort of device, and then in walked the Enclave, led by Colonel Autumn, a man we thought was dead. We black out, and when we awake... So, you're awake. Let's keep this nice and simple. You're going to tell me the code for that purifier, and you're going to tell me now. What the hell is going on here? I'll tell you what's going on here. You lost. The good guys won this one, and now we're just wrapping up loose ends. We've got the purifier, now we just need the code to start it. You're going to give me that code now, and save us all a lot of trouble. Maybe I'll even let you go. So how about it? This is some kind of mistake. You've got the wrong person. You really think I'm that stupid? I know you were there. I saw you. You're in a heap of trouble, kid. You're a traitor to the United States government. You know what happens to traitors, don't you? You give me that code, and maybe we can work out a deal for you. But you need to start talking right now. Let me out of here. Now! If you tell me the code, it might be worth your life. But you're really not in a position to be demanding anything, are you? Why do you want this code so badly? You know why. We can't start the purifier without it. The longer the purifier isn't running, the more people suffer. Now I'm running out of patience, son. I want that code, and I want it now. Screw you. I'm not telling you anything. I'll be honest. I'm running out of patience here, and I'm not looking to play games with you. You tell me that code, or it's going to cost you. No, seriously. Screw you. Why do you insist on provoking me? Tell me the code now. I'll tell you whatever you want. Just please don't hurt me. Now that's just what I wanted to hear. So what's the code? We can make up a code. Uh, the code is 704. Very well. We'll just verify that now. This is Colonel Autumn. Are your men in place, soldier? Affirmative, sir. Standing by for code transmission. Your code is 704. Repeat, 704. Confirm and enter. Copy, 704. Stand by, sir. Entering code now. Negative, sir. The code's no good. I just lost another man. Why do you insist on making things difficult? Maybe I should start shooting. How much blood you think you can afford to lose before you tell me what I want to know? Or we can give him the correct code. Now, neither James nor Madison Lee gave us this code, but it's easy to guess. After all, what was Mother's favorite verse? Revelation 21.6 I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Revelations 21.6 The code is 216. Let's just make sure you're telling the truth. This is Colonel Autumn. Are your men in place, soldier? Affirmative, sir. Standing by for code transmission. Your code is 216. Repeat, 216. Confirm and enter. Copy, 216. Stand by, sir. Entering code now. Confirm. That's the correct code. Systems coming online now, sir. I'll have a full report shortly. Thank you for cooperating. I'm afraid we no longer have need of your services. <laughs> but then we just die. He executes us. Well, I think we just learned everything we need to know about the Enclave. Or we can say, I don't know what the code is. You lie. Colonel, I have need of you. Mr. President, I have no time for other matters. I'll be with you shortly. Now, Colonel. Yes, sir. Ah, alone at last. I do apologize.
apologize for Colonel Autumn's attitude. He's been under a great deal of stress lately. I've no doubt that you know who I am. I'm sure you've heard my radio broadcasts. His radio broadcasts? That's right. We recognize that voice. We've heard that voice booming from iBots all over the wasteland. Hello again, America the Magnificent. This is President Eden, and I was hoping we could talk. This is John Henry Eden, the self-proclaimed President of America. I'd like to have a word with you face to face. I think there are a few things that you and I should discuss. You'll find your possessions in the locker near the door. I'll unlock the way for you. And I'll unlock your restraints as well. I'll be waiting for you in my office. Please don't carry. With that, he releases us from our restraints and unlocks a nearby locker where we find all of our gear. No matter which of the choices we made in that conversation with Colonel Autumn, unless we give him the correct code, President Eden will interrupt him so that we can escape. While putting on my gear, I discovered that my power armor was broken. Oh no. Well, guess we'll explore this place in my tidy whities We see President Eden spying on us from these wall cams. We can't attack them or damage them in any way, and we can't talk to them. Looks like he has to initiate a conversation. We find ourselves in cell number four, but as we open the door... Hold it right there. You're supposed to be in that holding cell. You're not going anywhere. There's a full complement of guards in the next room. As soon as I get them, you're going back to your cell. In a body bag, if necessary. Get out of my way. You will stand down and return to your cell at once. That's an order. Ten Cap says I can kill you before the guards get here. That's it. Guards! And with that, he and the nearby Enclave guards attack. But while we are fighting them, President Eden tells them to stand down. Attention to all Raven Rock personnel. This is your president speaking. I've invited our guests from Vault 101 to my office. Please do not impede our progress. Thank you for your cooperation. And then they stop attacking. Or we can try to bribe this guy. 500 caps as you never saw me. Understand? Are you bribing me? On second thought, you're not worth the caps. Guards! In which case he attacks. Or we can say, look, here are the caps. Just pretend we never saw each other. Well, okay. Hand him over. And with that, we give him 500 caps. Hey there. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Hey there, he says. With that, we can explore around him, or we can pass a speech check to say, Am I bribing you? Sure. You stay here while I get the caps. I'll be right back. Right here? Okay. Don't take too long. With that, he stands right there. We can walk by him or walk in the other direction. Or we can pass a strength check to say, Take a hike before you get squashed. I, uh, I, I have somewhere else to be. In which case, he turns around and runs away. Or we can pass a charisma check to say, I'm on my way up to see the president. How about I put in a good word for you? Uh, you are? I, I mean, uh, you would? Just make sure he knows I was real strict with you, okay? And that I didn't have my uniform on backwards this time. <laughs> Poor guy. Can't even wear his clothes properly. Or we can pass a speech check to say, whoa, whoa. Let's calm down. I'm supposed to be here. On whose authority? I have no records of that. You're supposed to be in a holding cell. The president wants to speak with me in his office. What? No one sees the president except Colonel Autumn. On your boss's authority. So you better let me pass before you get in trouble. Colonel Autumn is the only one authorized to see the president. Don't move. I'm going to find out what's going on here. With that, he walks to the eye camera. Uh, Mr. President, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, this is Lieutenant Williams. I have an unauthorized individual here who says he's supposed to speak with you. I'm surprised to hear from you, Lieutenant. I don't recall authorizing you to contact me directly. Yes, sir. I'm sorry about that. I, I just, uh, it just seemed out of the ordinary. I apologize. Apology noted, Lieutenant. Yes, I instructed our friend to come up to the control room. No questions, no interference. Am I understood? I understand, sir. Again, I apologize for the interruption. Allow our friend to pass and report your superior for reassignment, Lieutenant. 
at once. Yes, sir. I guess you'd better be on your way. Sorry for the, uh, for the interruption. And we can walk on by. If we kill him... On his body, we find an Enclave Officer uniform and hat. When fully repaired, the Enclave Officer uniform has a DR of 5, but grants plus 5 to energy weapons. And the Enclave Officer hat, when fully repaired, has a DR of 2, and also grants us plus 5 to energy weapons. The Enclave Officer hat is the only piece of headgear in the game that grants a bonus to energy weapons. Not even the Tesla or Enclave Power Armor helmets have this bonus, making it a pretty useful item for an energy weapons build. No matter how we choose to bypass Lieutenant Williams, as we walk, President Eden still comes on the intercom to tell the entire base to stand down. Attention to all Raven Rock personnel. This is your president speaking. If we walk south past Williams, we find cell number three to the left. And inside, Nathan Vargas? They're not who they say they are. Get out while you can, before they get you too. We of course remember Nathan from Megaton. All he did is walk around Megaton, praising the Enclave. And yet we find him here? Why did they kidnap him? He's just a harmless settler. Or did Nathan reach out to them? But we can't interact with him, we can't talk with him, we can't take him with us. All we can do is leave him here. Taking a look at our map, we see that both the southern and northern paths wrap around to the west. So it looks like eventually we'll be able to do a big loop. We'll continue by going south and then turning west. Here we find cell number two. And if we scared off Lieutenant Williams by passing the strength check, we see him trying to get in here. Apparently he can't open doors. We can open it for him. And he just stands here. If you're supposed to be meeting the president, then go do it. Get away from me. All right, Williams, you enjoy yourself. Continuing west, we find cell number one, but it's empty. Moving west, we find a sign above an archway. Sector 3A, Biolab and Cells. All right, that's where we are. We see a door to Sector 3B to the left, and then a map of the facility in front of us. Raven Rock. So the Enclave's headquarters is Raven Rock. Okay, so the red dot is where we are. 3A are the Biolabs and Cells. Looks like by going south and west, we missed some cells to the north and the biolab in the middle of 3A. We can get to 3B from here, that door right next to this map, and it looks like we can get to 3B by exploring the lab in the middle of 3A, taking the stairs up to 2A, which is the tech lab and cryo lab, then taking a door from 2A to 3B, the mess hall. 2A then connects to 2B via two pathways, one to the north and one to the west. 2B is storage and quarters. Then we go north from 2B to 2C, which is the war room and which connects to the control room. We have to go through the control room, south down a hallway to find 1B, hangar and deliveries, which leads to 1C, the entrance and the archives, and then the exit. Wow, Raven Rock is sprawling. We'll have to tackle this methodically. If we turn left, we find the door that leads to 3B, the mess hall, and we find a staircase that leads to a section beneath the walking platform. But it's booby-trapped by laser tripwires. These are the only laser tripwires in the entire game. In order to disarm them, we need a repair of 85 or higher, or science of 67 or higher. If we do, we can easily disarm them, and this provides a convenient way to bypass all of the Enclave, in case we managed to anger them somehow. At the other end, we arrive on the northern side of the western hallway for 3A. From here, we can turn east to open a door to explore the northern hallway of 3A, where we should find a few more cells. Sure enough, immediately to the left, we find cell 6. We don't find anything here, but we do find blood spatter on the floor. Looks like the Enclave has been busy. I wonder who or what resisted them here. Continuing east, as we approach cell 5... You might want to consider turning around, or taking another path. I know you're in a hurry, President Eden, but I'm not lost. Not yet, anyway. Just exploring. We can open the door to cell 5, and this one is likewise empty, but it does have another eye camera inside. Out and continuing east, this pathway connects all the way to cell 4, our cell. So we've done a big loop. There was one section left of the cells that we hadn't explored. Retracing our steps back to the western hallway, we can go south, and instead of taking the door to 3B, the mess hall, we can turn left and open the door in the middle of the cells to the bio lab. Moving forward, we find an enclave scientist examining something in a large tube. 
we see platforms above us and rooms to the left and right. Moving into the left room first, what's this? They have a ghoul in this chamber. And to the right of this, they have a dismembered Brahmin head. So the Enclave is running experiments on everyday common creatures of the wasteland. There's a footlocker in this room. Inside, we find some ammunition and a power fist. Turning around and moving south across the hall, we find another room. Here, an Enclave scientist is examining three more ghouls, each in their own containment cell. Turning east, we come back out into a hallway. We can move to the center of this room. Looks like they're examining a super mutant from Vault 87 in the middle of the lab. The southeastern room is empty. Here we find three more containers with two ghouls and a Brahmin head. And if we turn south, we can open a door to a supply room. Here we find three lockers. Nothing interesting in them. There's a footlocker on the ground with ammunition and an enclave supply crate with flamer fuel inside. Moving to the northeastern room on this bottom floor, we find some lab equipment and three more containment cells with more ghouls and dismembered Brahmin heads. To the north, we find a staircase leading to the upper platform. There's another Enclave supply crate on the ground. Inside, we find some microfusion cells. Heading upstairs, we see that the upstairs layout mirrors the downstairs layout, a small room in each of the four corners of this large room. Moving east first, this room has a bunch of computer terminals and it's patrolled by Enclave scientists and soldiers. Moving south, we find some sort of medical room. There are Mentats on a table, a first aid box on the wall, an exam seat that looks bloody and soiled. What did they do to people here? And another Enclave supply crate on the ground filled with microfusion cells, a plasma mine, and a stealth boy. The room in the southwestern corner, being patrolled by a man in Tesla armor, has an operating table, a privacy screen, and more containers. The lockers are empty, but we do find a first aid box on the wall. As we move to the final room, to the northwest... Attention! This is Colonel Autumn. You are hereby ordered to ignore the President's previous directive. The prisoner from Vault 101 is to be shot on sight. I repeat, shot on sight. This is an order. Uh-oh. The soldiers out in the lab take a while to respond to orders, but then they turn on us. But this is a handy way to get a new suit of power armor. Remember, my winterized T-51B suit is broken, and we can't repair it with other suits of power armor. So I'll just wear a fully repaired Tesla suit for now. If we loot these guys, they do drop fingers. So even though they were just following orders, they're bad. When the lab is clear, we can explore this final room. There's a locker with electron charge packs inside, an enclave crate on the ground with microfusion cells inside, a fission battery and some cigarettes in another locker, a first aid kit on the wall, and an enclave crate to the left with energy cells inside. From here, as we learned from the Raven Rock map, we find a door that leads to 2A, the tech lab and the cryo lab. On the other side of the door, we arrive in an upper room filled with Enclave machinery, and we can peer out the windows to snipe at the Enclave soldiers patrolling this room. With the lab clear, we can explore this northeastern room that we arrived in. The layout of this lab is almost identical to the last one, a large square two-storied lab with rooms in each corner. The lockers in this room are empty. Moving south, we find an iBot in one of these suspension chambers. We see wires or cables connecting to it. Perhaps it's being reprogrammed or repaired. The lockers to the northeast have microfusion cells inside. And here we find a table with one Mentats and a whole bunch of pencils. Moving to the southwestern room, we see part of a robo-brain suspended in one of these chambers. Here we find a door. We'll head that way in a minute. The trunk on the ground is empty. Moving north, we see a bunch of excess chairs. They all appear to be heavily stained, but the staining is identical, so perhaps it's rust, not blood. There are two crates on the ground here. One has 5mm ammunition, and the other has missiles and a pulse mine. That's it for the upper floor of this lab. We can take a staircase down to explore the lower floor. In the middle of the room, we find a pill-shaped looking technological device with cables sticking out of it. Turning left, we find a door. We'll explore that way in a bit. The northwestern room on the bottom floor has two iBots in some of these pods. The southwestern room has a robo-brain and an iBot. The southeastern room has a bunch of stasis pods, but they're empty. And finally, the northeastern room has a bunch of scrap and tools on a table and a couple of consoles. That's it for down here, so heading back upstairs, we can take the western door towards the rest of 2A. Here we find that door we saw on the map that leads to 3B, the mess hall. 
Since we skipped the door while exploring the cell block, we'll go ahead and explore 3B now. We arrive in a hallway with a stairway that goes down to the right. This leads to a door to the right, which opens up into the mess hall. And here we find a few Enclave soldiers. The Enclave are a tidy bunch. Each of these tables is set out with cups, plates, and silverware. Looks like they were getting ready for a meal. We find a doorway leading to a supply room to the north. We find a combat helmet and a footlocker to the right. And then in three lockers to the north, we find energy cells and microfusion cells. There are pots and pans, glasses on a table, and then three more lockers with energy cells and a fission battery. On the side of one of these lockers, we find two first aid kits, and then a table laden with all sorts of boxed foods. Blamco mac and cheese, cram, pork and beans, Instamash the lot. There's a staircase here that leads to the level below the walkway, and as we move through a doorway towards the space beneath the dining room, we see a bunch of silverware on the ground. Oh, that's a nice touch. The Enclave have spent years eating in this room, and since the floor is graded, the silverware all fell below, and they couldn't be bothered to clean it up. Back up and out of the storeroom, we can move to the main dining room, where we just find more cutlery, and then open a door on the eastern side of the room. This leads down a staircase and through a door back to 3A. These are the cells that we came from. This is the door we chose not to go through, and instead we went to the labs. So we've come full circle. With the mess hall explored, we can retrace our steps and head back towards 2A. We already explored the tech lab, now to explore the cryo lab of 2A. To do so, we open a door to the north. On the other side, we see creatures in cryopods and enclave scientists. The Enclave Scientists we killed are all wearing the Enclave Scientist outfit. The Enclave Scientist outfit has a DR of 3 and grants plus 5 to science. They look a lot like advanced radiation suits, but they have different colors, and there are only so many of them in the game. They're only worn by Enclave Scientists, and Enclave Scientists don't respawn when killed. They can be repaired by other Enclave Scientist outfits. With the room clear of hostels we can explore, this lab, like all the others, has the exact same layout. In the center of the room, we see a death claw, presumably cryogenically frozen, which means it's still alive. Heading upstairs first, we see a doorway in the northeastern corner. We'll pass through here after we finish exploring the lab. Turning south, we find computers and consoles in the southeastern room. Moving to the southwestern room, we find a bunch of empty cryopods. And in the northwestern room, we find one cryopod with a ghoul suspended inside. On the ground, we find an enclave chest with missiles and a plasma mine. Scrap on a table, another crate on the ground next to it with more ammunition and another plasma mine a locker with cigarettes and an ashtray, more mentats on a table, and another first aid box on the wall. With the top floor explored, we can head to the bottom floor. The northwestern room has two more death claws suspended in pods. The southwestern room is empty. The northeastern room has one Yao Guai, and the southeastern room has one more ghoul. To the west, we find a door leading to 2B, storage and quarters. But before going through here, let's go back upstairs and take the northeastern doorway to the final section of 2A. We arrive at the top of a staircase and have to take it down. This leads to a large room with a bunch of concrete and steel pillars inside, but there's absolutely nothing here. No containers, no stasis pods, nothing. To leave, we turn north to go out a door towards 2B, storage and quarters. We arrive in a long hallway that goes west. Eventually, we see a nook off to the north, with a staircase leading down below the walking platform. Another opportunity to sneak by if we wanted to. We find plenty of laser tripwires down here, but no containers or anything else of interest. So we'll take the upper walkway. Moving west, we see a sign. 2B to the south, and 2C to the north. Well, since 2C leads up to floor 1, we'll turn south to explore 2B for now. This leads to quarters. We see an open door to the left, it's a barracks, four beds, each of which has a footlocker, and we see more containers blocked off with a blue force field. To remove it, we need to hack the average locked security barrier terminal. Once hacked, we can deactivate the barrier, and it disappears. We loot a grenade box, which has plasma grenades and a power fist inside, a larger armor case, which has a full set of Enclave power armor, at low condition though, and a gun case, which has energy cells and a plasma pistol. The first foot locker has shotgun shells in it, and the others are all empty. We find three lockers against the southwestern wall, but not much inside. And finally, we can loot a first aid kit above the third one. 
Then crossing the hall, we can open a door to the next barracks, and inside we find... What? Anna Holt? You? What are you doing here? Anna, get out of here while you can. They'll be here any second. Get out? Why on earth would I want to do that? I've worked hard to fit in here. I've done everything they've asked of me. I'm not about to leave now, when I finally have access to their labs. Wait a minute. What are you doing here? They... they captured me. Brought me here from Project Purity. I didn't want to help them at first, but... The technology they have here, it's so far advanced from anything I've worked with. You've been helping them? Of course. You've seen the kind of technology these people have. They want to help people. They want to change the wasteland. I couldn't pass up an opportunity to work in an environment like this. What have you told them? They wanted information. About Dr. Lee, about Project Purity. They want to know how to start it up, and why it wouldn't work. I told them everything I could. About the Gek, about the damage caused by the explosions, all of it. Why would you abandon everything you worked for with Dr. Lee? Look, it's not personal. Really, it's not. But Dr. Lee, she's scraping by. She's scavenging for parts in the wastes. The Enclave has everything it needs. They're light years ahead of anything Dr. Lee could accomplish. Working here is my best chance to help make the world a better place. You've betrayed Dr. Lee and my father. I'm sorry you see it that way. What are you going to do? Kill me over it? You should go. It sounds like you're in enough trouble as it is. And honestly, I don't want anyone to see me talking to you. Do you know how to get out of here? I'm afraid I'm not able to help you with that. You should go. I don't want anyone seeing me talking to you. That's why she wasn't with us when we escaped through Taft Tunnels. She was captured by the Enclave and, it appears, converted. Looks like she really does believe in what the Enclave stands for. Could they be... right? Are they really trying to make the world a better place? But how could they be when their methods are so... inhuman? We could always kill her, but if we do, we lose karma. She betrayed us, but she's not hostile, and in her delusion, she does think she's doing the right thing, so we'll let her live. Here, Anna Holt stays. Just like with Nathan, we can't convince her to come with us. Continuing south, we find a door to the left that leads to 2A, back to the cryo lab where we saw all those death claws in stasis. So instead of going there again, we'll continue south towards storage. Here we find a bunch of cages, some of which are open, many of which are disassembled. These pieces are interesting. They're modular and can make anything from cages to barricades to platforms. To the southwest, we find a bunch of lockers. Oh, great. Are we really going to have to go through each of these? Okay, here we go. Clipboard and cigarettes. Ashtray and cigarettes. Cigarettes and mug. Holy cow. Cigarettes and clipboard. These Enclave, they just love their cigarettes. Every single one of these has cigarettes inside. Oh, finally, one with something other than cigarettes. We get microfusion cells from one, and the rest are either empty or have more cigarettes. There's an Enclave crate beneath a 2B sign with energy cells inside, and one against the northern wall with 5mm rounds inside. But we've hit a dead end, so to continue, we can head north and open the large door at the end of the hallway. We see two doors at the end of this hallway. As we're about to enter one, the other one opens. This door leads to the war room and 1A access, but before we head that way, we can turn around to open the door to the west. This appears to be another private room, but it's much larger than the others. We see three more enclave chests, guarded by a force field, some microfusion cells in a cabinet, and the energy weapons bobblehead on a table. You found a vault Limited Edition bobblehead. The inscription on the base reads, Arrive at peaceful resolutions by using superior firepower. Your energy weapon skill has permanently been increased by 10. This is the only opportunity we'll have to explore Raven Rock, and thus our only opportunity to get this bobblehead. We'd better not miss it. To the west, we find a bottle of scotch and a bunch of cutlery, two more lockers, one of which has microfusion cells, and a first aid kit on top. There's an average locked footlocker at the foot of this bed. Inside, we find 10 millimeter ammunition, five buff out, five ment hats, and the Zax destruct sequence. What is that? It's a holotape. Taking a listen in our pip boy. I'm not entirely sure Eden can be trusted. And I think he knows I don't trust him. But I don't think he knows I have the emergency destruct sequence for his console. Priority override. Authorization code 420 
0-3-2-0-9, and boom. It'd have to be a last resort, of course, but at least the option is there. Well, look at that. Looks like Eden's having trouble maintaining the loyalty of even his most senior officers. The holotape said this would destroy his console. I wonder if that also means destruction of Raven Rock. Activating the nearby wall-mounted security barrier terminal, we can hack it to disable the barricade blocking us from three enclave chests. One has a small amount of 10 millimeter ammunition, the other has nine missiles, and the last one has a bunch of first aid and chems. Now we can move east to explore the war room and 1A access. After looting the enclave that we killed, we go up the stairs and head north to enter the war room, but we don't find any enemies here. Climbing some steps, we can examine a console in the middle of the war room, and it appears to be a map of the Capital Wasteland. If we look at it like this, I think the red one is the Jefferson Memorial with the Citadel right next to this. Perhaps north of the Citadel is Megaton, but I'm not sure what the others would be. If we look at it from the other side, then the red one becomes Raven Rock, perhaps, but I'm not sure what the others would be. The only door in this room is to the west. This leads to the Raven Rock control room. And on the other side... Eden's controlling the robots, and he's turned against his own Enclave soldiers. Sounds like he's waiting for us in the control room on the other side of this door. But we're out of time. We'll have to meet with President Eden in the control room in our next episode. I publish many Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you feel like you're still missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.